What's up, YouTube? This is Jacob Bender with part 3B in our RPG, RPG uh, programming tutorials. In the last tutorial, we went over movement, how to... So basically, we understand that it's actually an illusion. We're not using any actual physics with our character. But now, the problem is, is if we test our movie, and we go to here, if we move too far, our guy just floats in the air. Technically, he's not even floating, because he's... It's, this is just an illusion. It's just meant to look like your character is rolling or whatever. And either way you go, he moves. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a way. Oops, go ahead and get that out of the way. We need to create a way that a that whenever the character touches the edge of the map, he'll be teleported to what's called the overworld. And for those, again, who don't know what an overworld is, an overworld is basically a large map that you view all at once, but the character usually moves faster across that, or usually you select waypoints you want to directly go to or travel based on from your current position. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into our... At first, we're going to actually name our he an instance of our hero. We'll just call it Hero. And we're going to go into our scenery. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our square tool, a rectangle, create like a box about yay big, doesn't matter. Make it any color you want. I'm going to make it like a light blue. Give it some slight alpha. You can keep the thing, uh, the border on. I don't like to most of the time. I'll go ahead and convert it to a symbol. We'll call it wall. Now what you need to do is let's place it about mm, about right there and we'll give it an instance of wall L for wall left and copy this oh, oops copy paste it over here as well I'm gonna place it a little bit farther about about uh, yay. Mm, that should be good. Okay. So next, now that we have our walls, oh, whoops, don't forget to change this to wall R. So now that we have our walls, if we go into here, if we go into our game, if you notice, we'll actually still see them. Now we don't want them to actually be visible because these are going to be like little place markers basically to define where the edges of the map are. So a simple way to do this is just go on clip event enter frame this dot underscore alpha equals zero and copy this do it on the same so now when we test our movie you notice they are now invisible now why we did that and didn't just make them invisible like through their actual colors by going through here and changing the alpha over here to zero is because um, is oops. we would like to be able to you know see our borders we don't want the users to see them but the users aren't going to be seeing it like this they're going to be seeing it like this it's still there but it's not it's alpha is zero so next what we need to do is go let's go ahead and just create a dummy A dummy overworld map nothing with real function right now just something basic insert keyframe give the middle one the title of overworld and we'll just do like a flat whoops nice little green whoops ah what am I doing? There we go. Change the alpha back to a hundred. And we'll just create some circle blotches. Whoops. Being trees or something. Some big fucking trees. Anyways. <laughs> Um, actually, the scenery is supposed to be going. It's good to have consistency, so we'll place it there. Okay. So now, if we go back here, we can now give 
uh, function to our main character. And remember that our original movie clip is called scenery. And then within it we have wall L and wall R. So if we go down to here and type in on clip event, enter frame. If this dot hit test I like to refer to the main root underscore root dot scenery dot wall L. And if you type in the double uh, pipeline, which is the which is that key on the very right side of your keyboard, right above the enter and below the backspace, it produces the backslash normally, but if you hold shift you get a pipeline. If you type in two of those, it means or. If you type in that, then type in this dot hit test underscore root dot scenery dot wall r then for right now we'll just go trace actually we don't need to hit, do trace we'll just type in underscore root dot go to and stop overworld so now if we test our movie, hit continue, if we touch it, boom, we are now in the overworld. And basically it's the same concept with our hero in the overworld. Uh, actually there's one of two ways to do it. Uh, the way I'm going to actually do it is I'll probably just have a large map with different locations and each location will have a button and you just click. Hmm, yeah, you click to go to each area, and when you go to an area, I'll have a little status bar to say traveling to blah blah blah, and that timer will go up slowly. And during that timer, you'll have a random chance for a battle encounter. And the farther the place is, the farther the loading time will be. Alright, so I guess that's it for this tutorial. Uh, to go over what we went, we, what we did again, is we added uh, barriers to our map. Or to our first town and we made it redirect a player to the overworld that way a player doesn't go fully off the map now if you notice it did it when we went to the left side so if we try and go to the right side it does the same thing and generally sometimes most of the time you want to actually you know uh, extend the actual map that way um, Players don't actually see the ed literal edge of the map. That way it seems, uh, well, seamless. Right, we'll move that temporarily. And let's say we just move it like that, and then this piece like this, but place it back in the same spot, roughly around uh, right there. usually want to give yourself a nice big uh, space so always test it so now if we hit it boom we went to the overworld and we didn't even see the edge of the map whoops if we test it the other direction I don't know why it's over here now if we test it the other direction oh we barely see it but again that's easily remedied by fixing it yourself alright so I guess that's it for this tutorial the next tutorial uh, we'll be going over the travel process of when you click to a town, the random bar, and during that time you may encounter a random battle. And then after that, no promises, after that we'll go into actually how to do turn-based combat. Woo! Okay. So this has been Jacob Bender. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.